In this chapter, we cover the nesting of fabrication curves into rectangular profiles, representing the maximum sheet size permissible for CNC or laser cutting. We start by organizing the four different fabrication curve lists of the warp layer. Main cut profiles, slot curve profile, internal fold lines, and text curves. Next, we bring the open nest component into the canvas. Open nest component requires several inputs, which already have default values. The main input we need to specify is the sheet size, the nesting geometry, the spacing parameter, and a Boolean toggle to run the component. For sheet, we must construct a rectangle with dimensions equal to the maximum permissible sheet size. For this exercise, the laser cutting machine allows a maximum sheet of 600 by 900 millimeters. So we create a rectangle of size 600 by 900 and connect it to the sheet's input. The spacing input specifies the gap between two curve profiles after the nesting process is completed. This value should be determined by testing the machine for the appropriate distance between two curves. For this exercise, we set this value to 2 mm. For the geometry input, we use the list of main cut profiles. Flatten the geometry input, and connect the list of main cut profiles to the geometry input. Next step is to run the solver. The solver takes a minute to execute. The output from OpenNest gives us the rectangular profile representing the number of sheets required. The geometry output returns all nested main cut profiles. Collect all these nested profiles into a curve container component and tag it. To translate all the other curve profiles to fit within the nested profile, we have to use the transform output from the open nest. Transform is a data type that stores multiple move and rotate commands into a single data instruction. This can be used with the transform function to organize the other three curve profiles within the nested curve profiles. If we hover over the transform output, it shows that the output has 48 elements. This means one transform data for each strip. Hence we must ensure that the other curve lists must be organized in 48 branches, without any sub-branches. Check the other three curve lists by hovering over each list. And we can now confirm that they all have 48 branches. Connect the slot curves list to the geometry input of the transform component. Graph the transform component and connect the transform data from the open nest component into the transform component. The slot curve will reorganize within the nested cut profiles. Copy the transform component and repeat the same process for the other two sets of curves.
we get the remaining sets of curves reorganized within the nested cut profiles. As an additional step, take the list of internal lines and convert them into dashed lines. Bring the dash pattern component into the canvas Connect the internal fold lines list to the curve input, and use a panel to define a pattern of 1 and 2. This means 1 is the length of the dashed line, and 2 unit is the gap between two line patterns. Create a separate layer for each curve type in the warp layer with the following names. Warp layer, main cut profiles, warp layer, slot curves, warp layer, internal fold lines, Warp layer, annotation tags. Bake each list of nested curves into its respective layer. Then, repeat the entire nesting and baking process for the weft fabrication curves.
These baked curves can be saved as .dxf file and used for laser cutting. The entire definition covered in Module 04 is robust enough to generate fabrication data for most quad meshes, provided all internal vertices have even number valence count. Depending on the size of the geometry, you may have to tweak certain numeric inputs governing the offset sizes, slot sizes, and point groups proximity. For ease of understanding, the complete grasshopper definition file has been provided for your reference. It is divided into seven sections, as covered in chapters 2 to 8. Each section has a data dam right at the beginning to ensure that any change in one section does not affect the next section unless the user wants to. This helps in debugging the definition stepwise, while trying it with different mesh geometries. To pass the data through the data dam, just click on the play icon, and the data will flow to the next section. The exercise file also comes with a reference Rhino model of the Costa minimal surface with colored strips. Warp and weft strips are baked in separate layers, and their tags are also in separate layers. For learners who opted for the prototyping kit, this model will serve as reference during the assembly process. Hope you enjoyed the workflow. Do try this workflow with other mesh geometries and build complex strip morphologies.